we should talk about our our store our, our pro life story. And I also would like to ask you about your conversion to Christianity, if you don't mind. I'd like to learn about that too, because I feel like religion is a very important element in a person's personal ethics. And I feel like that can drive them in their particular way with something. And I know that we're not all going to agree um, in an organization or as a society on everything, but I think every person ha should have a chance to tell their story and their point of view. And unfortunately, there's just not enough talking about certain things, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I I totally, yeah. Um, I feel like if I was, if I had a magical button where I could just do whatever I want and get things to where I want them to be I feel like there'd be a lot different happening in terms of RPLA but yeah we can um, definitely talk more generally about that stuff yeah like do you want to ask me questions or what do you want yeah um, sure. I was I want we take turns uh, I ask you a question you ask me a question and we get something a, a little less depressing but something more generic that doesn't have to be all about RLPA and what and the problems we've been noticing but yeah I, first what? I'd just like to ask you how um how did you convert to Christianity were, were how, how what were you before and how did you become a Christian yeah I kind of feel like I was actually talking about this at church like a week ago uh, when I had like my interview for membership. So I'm probably going to be a member of my church now. But um, I kind of feel like I like kind of reverted, if that makes sense. Um, because when I was like a teenager, I definitely was a Christian. Um, like I got baptized when I was like, I think 12, I think I was 2005. So I think I was 12. Um, and I got baptized with like submerged, like the the typical like Baptist church way. Um, and I like definitely like went to church on my own. My parents weren't even taking me like my dad was an atheist. Um, it was oh. kind of like, I genuinely did believe, you know, um, but when I became like a later teenager, like when I was like 16, 17, whatever, it feels like the way things around me were going, like the way the world was and just, you know, the the temptation I guess to just be like a normal person as opposed to a Christian if that makes sense I don't know I mean huh. not that Christians aren't normal but like, that's kind of like I know it's like mean, kind of, I just need to um be like everyone else and I need to make friends and I need to find this and do that and whatever it just kind of like slowly got me to a point where like I didn't actually like believe anymore like, I just was so entwined with, like, my life as opposed to, like, what God has done for me, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I was definitely an atheist for, like, my 20s. And then what happened was I became a pro-life activist. So there's, like, a long story. Um, I was dating. I'll go not super long back. But so then that fast forward, like, 10 years from what I just stopped talking about, um, I was dating this guy that I met in the animal rights movement. So I was already like a full-time activist, but mostly focusing on animals at this point. Um, and um, with lack of a better way to say it, he kind of just was an asshole. Um, so when we broke up, um, <laughs> I don't know, I don't need to dive into it. But like when we broke up, I was incredibly devastated. Um, I thought that we would be together for a long time. And I kind of just needed a little bit of like separation I guess um so I didn't really want to like spend all my time in animal rights circles knowing that like he would probably be there and like we all had the same friends and all that stuff um I had been pro-life for a very long time um I pretty much since I learned what abortion was in like third fourth grade whatever it was um so like but I didn't really know that anything was happening um around the same time somehow um either power pro-life sf did a rescue um and got arrested and I had never seen anything like that before I had it just popped up on my like Facebook news feed if I'm not even mistaken it, I think it was just I was scrolling on Facebook and I saw that and I immediately was like I need to do that like I'm gonna get in touch with them like that sounds like something I can spend my time doing like I thought pro-lifers just stood on the sidewalk and yelled at people 
you know, um, the stereotypical like thing that nobody even does, but yeah. like for some thinks they do. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, well, it's so, interesting though because see, here's the thing: is I grew up being taught Christianity. It was all I knew. And my mom also homeschooled me too. And the first and most important subject was the Bible. And we had Christian, you know, homeschool materials with the Bible. So I was learning the Bible from my earliest days, back before my memory even goes. And yet, mm -hmm. I think what I found to be so disturbing is that there's people who call themselves Christians and yet, well, they're complete jerks, you know, <laughs> and they're nothing, they're nothing like what Jesus taught people to do. And then of course I have my own, my own uh, questions and there's just uh, uh, stuff about the Bible, see the contradictions and things that I personally have a problem with. And then, you know, there is the whole element of being transgender and gay and that kind of thing. And how does a person resolve that? And that's something I've been trying to study for a long time back, you know, reading books and, and trying to figure out a lot of different things. But I think what happened with me is a lot of things started falling apart in my teen years because I remember I was praying. Uh, I was at the creek. You know, I used to go to the woods where there was a creek and everything where I used to live. I was like 14 years old and I was screaming at God for not making me a girl. You know, and so it was so it was weird. I was obviously transgender. That was all I, I I thought about for a long time. And so I would always yell at God about things I didn't like in the Bible or that he put me in a male body instead of female body, which I knew who I was meant to be. So I had my own problems. And so I was like a I, I was like a Christian, but basically uh thinking, well, God's an idiot. Um, but then I realized that hey, that's what people think about me. People think I'm an idiot too. And I just, I'm just going to say there's a lot that I don't understand. There's a lot that none of us understand about other people. And I think the same is true of God. There's so many questions I have, but I'm not afraid to ask, ask the questions. And there's a lot of people, including in certain churches, that they discourage questions. Like if you ask certain questions, oh, blasphemy, don't question God, you're evil, you know, for asking a question. And you, and you probably are familiar with that, too. Like, you're just not allowed to, to ask certain questions. And then, you know, th then, of course, the whole animal thing, you know, well, like, what? Did God really or order people to kill animals or ritual sacrifices? I like to think not, because I don't believe in animal killing. So, you see, I had my own beliefs, ethics. I had my own pro-life beliefs. I had my animal beliefs about uh, being pro-life for the animals, being vegan. And so... I just kind of avoided Christianity like the plague. I was kind of like RLPA is avoiding topics. That's what I did. I was avoiding it like the plague, and I didn't think about it, didn't talk about it. But I'm just like, now I guess you could say I'm not as afraid as I used to be of topics like that, you could say. And I like to talk about it. I like to learn people's um, stories of how they came to be where they are. And we're all evolving and changing. It's not like you have to be the same thing you were 20 years ago. I mean, children become adults, you know, tadpoles become frogs, you know, people change and become better and better versions of themselves or worse as the case may be. But do you have any questions for me? No, I, I'm well, um, yeah, I'll probably think of a question, but um, let me, let me finish my story though. Okay. <laughs> so, so when I became a pro-life activist, I was still an atheist. And then um, I started organizing with Pro-Life SF and we wanted to do like a week of action. So we had like an Airbnb, we had like people in town. And um, I don't know if you've met like either AJ or Tim or Mason. Uh, Mason's Pro-Life Spider-Man, AJ's, uh, I think with White Rose now, AJ Hurley. Um, and Tim is five <laughs> White Rose Resistance. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, that's, that's so ironic. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, so they were all at the Airbnb and I walk in and they're like, like sitting around the table reading the Bible. And I thought they were trying to like play a trick on me. Like I had never like saw anybody read the Bible before in my life besides opening it up in church. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, 
so like from there 